it's not really about so much where, you know, if you trained or if you went to a certain school, or it's more about your passion and like the amount of work and time you've put into, the, into your craft. That could be in your bedroom, that could be in, I don't know, in a university or uh, like a school. So, it, it, you know, it really doesn't matter. Just as long as you're like dedicated and you're about your craft, and then you, you know, you, you'll reap the benefits. I think it was for me the the possibility of composing and creating music that can influence songs to, to, to happen. So coming from a classical music background, a jazz background where I'm always playing other people's music or playing composers' music from the past. It's like, it's pretty special to be able to inspire a song through the music that you make. It was more of a hobby to, be, to begin with. You know, I was just like a beat maker, making beats in my bedroom. And uh, it slowly just started to take over my life. I was at university and I was uh, studying art and design. And, um, you know, I found myself skipping lectures and just doing everything I could to like constantly be in that space where I was creating. So yeah, it, it kind of came out of the blue. I don't come from a musical background like Roger or I was just experimenting, just making my own beats and tracks. And uh, yeah, I just fell in love with it. I think for me and, and most people that I work with and that I know, the most important thing is to come prepared. So to have ideas, like I would say that's a formula or that's a method of saying like, okay, you know, when you're not in the room with an artist, you're at home or you're in your studio or in your bedroom or wherever you like to work and chill and just make ideas without the pressure of thinking who could this be for? I mean, sometimes, sometimes those comments could be true. Like they, they it, it's, you know, it, today, like, for, like everyone has so much access to the tools that, like, back in the day, like musicians didn't have, or people that wanted to make music didn't have. You know, there's a there's a good side and a bad side to that. Obviously, you know, you're gonna have people who have the access to create whatever they want. Some of it is gonna be good, and some of it's gonna be bad. So, you know, but there are a lot of people like just like me who started in their bedroom, and. Uh, you know, a lot of them have the same, similar stories to me, and they are producing, you know, really big songs and like they're winning Grammys. And, and it, it doesn't, it's not really about so much where, you know, if you trained or if you went to a certain school, or it's more about your passion and like the amount of work and time you've put into, the, into your craft. That could be in your bedroom, that could be in, I don't know, in a university or uh, like a school. So. It, it, you know, it really doesn't matter. As long as you're like dedicated and you're about your craft, and then you, you know, you, you'll reap the benefits. I mean, I would say it's always going to be there. It's always going to happen, depending on how you take criticism. That reflects a lot on your progress, like throughout your career. So, obviously, starting out a lot of my mentors that I was working under were kind of like, oh, you know, that's, that bass line is whack, or don't play stuff like that, or this, and you kind of, the goal is not to hear the same comment again. So I feel like, but when it comes to like trolls and people on the internet saying like, oh, you know, he only played, this song's only two chords, this song's only this and that, it's like, I know, but you didn't do it. So <laughs> it's kind of like, that's kind of what you have to, understand is, is people don't know what happens. People don't know you or your personal life or what happens behind the scenes or how much work it took to make the song. All they see is a, you know, a genius breakdown or a, an article or something and they start assuming things. So for me, criticism is inspiring because whether it's good or bad, it's like they're still listening to the song. They're still engaged by something that you created. So. If it creates feelings of hate and jealousy, 
there's nothing I can do about that. But if it's feelings of like, you're so inspiring and you're great, then it's good. So I think on both ends, it's like, regardless of what they're saying or what people say, if they don't like a song, they don't like, they don't understand. That's subject to change too. Cause sometimes you hear songs and you hear ideas and you don't like it at first. And you're like, you know what? I actually really like that song. I actually started, you know, really enjoying it the more I listened to it. So for me, it's, it's gonna be there. And I kind of don't mind. Me and another producer and Drom were in a room just working together and kind of just finishing stuff up for his album, for what songs we already had and kind of making ideas. We were feeling kind of tired, so we left, or we were about to leave, we were packing up to leave around like nine, 10 o'clock, and then Drum ran back in and said, oh, I just called Lil Yachty and he's gonna pull up to the studio right now, so can we make something? And you know, of course, I set the keyboard back up, we do it all, and you know, as I'm pushing the keys to get sound, I, I don't have sound because the engineer shut everything off, so I was telling him to turn, you know, my channel back on, and then I was just kind of plucking keys, just aimlessly, like not thinking about anything. And then when he turned it on, it was just those chords that you hear on the piano. And then the other producer caught it and said, hey, let's record that. She started building a beat, drum ran back in. I was like, oh, this sounds really cool. And Lil Yachty came in, we, fin you know, we finished the, the, tr the track, we put that flute sound, I put the flute on, on the hook, and. Lil Yachty did his verse in about 20 minutes, just sat there, thought of it, wrote it, executed it all in about 20, 30 minutes. And Drum just got on the mic after and sang the hook. And I didn't know what was going on. I was like, what is this? So you can't quite tell sometimes in the beginning when you're making something, it never really sounds as cool as it does the next day or like, you know, sometimes people are in the studio for too long. It's like, well, let's, get a, let's take a break. Let's go get some food chill, whatever, come back, and then come back with fresh ears. So that was like, I can't even explain or what to call it. It was just the right place, right time, right people. That was actually like a beat I started at home in London. And then I came to LA and I actually uh, had a session with another producer called Louis Elastic. And um, we finished the track together. I was in the studio and I uh, ran into a guy called Jay Cash and um, he asked me for like a folder of tracks I, and that track was in the folder. I didn't think anything of it. I mean, a couple of weeks later, he sent me back the song. You know, it was just a demo at the time uh, and John Ryan had written it with um, uh, Amar Malik and Jay Cash and um, yeah, they just sent me, he just texted me this song and was like, what do you think? And I was like, it sounds like a hit. I, well, I thought uh, John Ryan sounded like Adam Levine. So I said, oh, can you get it to Adam Levine? Not thinking that he could. And then Adam Levine records the song. Six months later, it's out, it's a Maroon 5 song. Yeah, it was like, it just happened like, just like that. You know, that's kind of rare for a song to like, be created and then come out so soon afterwards. And there's also like to say, oh, can you get this artist on it? And then it just materialized like that. That's, that's very rare, but um, yeah, that's, that's definitely one of the um, occasions where things have just come together. It took years to kind of come together, as in it started out as an idea that uh, me and Hit Boy made together, just having a regular, you know, cook-up session. Over time, hearing different things about the song, like, hey, you know, Travis really likes this idea, they made a song to it, and then a year later you hear oh, it's gonna be on Astral World, and then you hear the song and it's put together with three things. So I, I wasn't there for that process, of, but I know that Travis was putting it together and a fragment that you made or something smaller or that you think is, you don't know what is gonna be, could end up being part, a very important part of a song later because you kind of plant this seed with your ideas and some, you know, it, it'll grow and it'll develop and some other person, it might end up in another artist's or producer's hands and they'll get inspired by it, use it, put it, and then you have a song like, like Sicko Mode, which was, it's a very musical song and there's key changes and, you know, musical changes and, and, and things like that that are very reminiscent of 
the quality of music from the past. Like, I saw somebody compare it to Bohemian Rhapsody, and not in, obviously, um, technically, but I'm saying structure-wise. Structure-wise, it's like, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody is too, it's, it's a very long song. It's like, it's a six minute thing. And I, I mean, I'm into stuff like that because I come from, you know, going to the symphony or going to the concert hall and watching long recitals and whatnot. But I think a song like that hasn't been um, present in pop music to where it's that long and there's that many changes and, and movements within one piece. So I think it's good for pop music and rap music and just any kind of music in general. And I think it's nice to be a part of something that opens up the door for everyone else to be a little more creative and um, take some risks. Uh, I had that track or that idea for like three years. Um, it's, it's a very old, old idea. I was surprised I even got used in the end, but yeah, I made that track like three years ago again in my bedroom like and um you know i had a session with murder murder beats and uh that was one of the ideas where i was just flicking through stuff and i played it by accident and he heard it and was like let's work on this you know so um but that was like three years had passed and um i you know i didn't expect the migos to like jump on and like an idea like that so um yeah, it, it depends. Like like with the with the Maroon Five, six months, Migos three years. Like you should always, you should never undervalue what you create. You should always like, you know. Um, I would I would say try and create with purpose, but like, don't don't think oh this idea is too old, so you know, it's not gonna work anymore. I was in bed. <laughs> I wake up late, so I'm not gonna lie. That's uh, you know late nights working and whatnot. But I woke up to just maybe 12 or 13 text messages from different people, friends, uh, my you know my parents, my manager, and everyone was like, "Hey, congratulations on your nominations!" And oh my God, Sicko Mode got nominated this many times. Oh my God, I saw your name on the thing, and I was like. I was like, it's so early. I was just like, wait, what? And then I went to the, um, you know, to all the websites and the blogs, and I saw my name on there as well as the other nominations that I was a part of. And then seeing all my friends nominated too, and like seeing Curtis as well and everyone else, it's like, it's just a crazy feeling because I wasn't like sitting at home like I can't wait for the nominations to come out. Like I was just like, I didn't need, I didn't even know they were releasing it that day and. It's, it's always a nice surprise because, you know, we don't do it, I don't, you know, we don't do music for, to get a Grammy or to get an award. You do it because you love it. And then when stuff like this happens and you get this surprising news, like, oh, like, good morning, you just went three times platinum or good morning, you're nominated for a Grammy. It's, it's like really, really nice feeling. <laughs> so I was just in bed, surprised, trying to wake up and it was a nice, uh, good news to wake up to. I was actually in bed. Uh, yeah, not with Roger, but like, <laughs> but um, I was. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I woke up and I, I saw like messages on my phone, um, and yeah, I was uh, I was I was sh I was happy. Obviously, I was like ecstatic. You know, it's uh, to be Grammy nominated is uh, is insane. Like thinking of like where I came from in terms of it just being a hobby, mm -hmm. it's like I'm like you know very grateful that um, I get to be nominated on a project like Black Panther and and see so many of my peers and friends like being nominated as well and like um, yeah it's, it was a it was a great moment. <laughs>